Hurricane Aaron churning out into the Atlantic, but new areas to watch behind it. Meanwhile, a shot of fall like air on the way for many. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful and beautiful Thursday. And hopefully we're having a wonderful out, uh, one out there, I should say. It is August 21st and uh, still tracking the tropics, as you would expect, into this time of the year. We've got Aaron now kind of finally getting on its last uh, little bit of impacts out for some of us and pulling on out to sea. Meanwhile, though, you'll notice next to me uh, some other areas that we need to watch down into the tropics that are bubbling up with convection and showing signs of life that could potentially form into newly named storms. So we're going to break it all down for you, including that shot of fall air on the way in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the latest and greatest model data and my analysis of that data. And uh, trust me, I'm never going to gatekeep uh, info from you. I'm always going to show it to you and give you the context behind it uh, so you're well informed of what you're seeing probably all over social media anyway. All right, let's go ahead and dive right on into things. And we'll start with a look at the tropics and not hard to find where the areas uh, that kind of jump out of you are. Here's Hurricane Aaron uh, just off the eastern seaboard of the United States, a big storm. And luckily, one that is pulling on up and out to sea. That's exactly what we like to see at this time of year. Behind it, uh, we do have a couple other areas that kind of jump out probably at you on satellite. Both are uh, pretty active tropical waves here uh, that are, you know, having a chance at least to form into something. In fact, we also have a little tiny blob out here uh, that kind of uh, blew up and is now dying back down that also has the chance to potentially form into something. So, you know, a pretty active lookout into the tropics, all things considered, and the National Hurricane Center tracking all of these areas as well. Now, here's Aaron uh, down to, you know, about 105 miles an hour right now or a category two storm pressure uh, sitting in that 945 millibar range. Luckily, you can see this one pulling well on out to sea. In fact, uh, before you know it, it's going to be not too far south from Iceland about a week or so from now. Now behind it, we do have uh, some other areas to watch. We got this region of red, this one having a high percentage chance of developing into our next name storm, which would be Fernand. Uh, that could potentially happen as early as this weekend and into early next week. And you can see that one generally going in the direction of Bermuda. So we'll need to watch that. We've got another little area out here, very small in chance of developing and likely wouldn't mean anything for anyone. And then another area out here near the Cape Verde Islands, kind of halfway uh, across the Atlantic right now, at least halfway across the main development region with a chance of developing as well. So that's the latest on, you know, what the NHC is saying. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at satellite and dive into all these areas, and I'll give you my latest thoughts. Here are those waves in the main development region. You can see not one, not two, but three of them out here that are all, you know, pretty well looking and generally speaking on their own, meaning they're not kind of all attached into one just big monsoonal trough. And now they all have originated from that uh, monsoonal trough, the IATCZ, that intertropical convergence zone, uh, but all standalone waves right now, which is something we start to see this time of year and makes it easier for these storms to develop. In fact, uh, you know, all three of these looking relatively healthy, this one all the way on the far uh, western side, that one with the highest chance of developing as it pulls north of the Leeward Islands over the next couple of days. The one in the middle here with a medium percent chance of developing and then the one behind it not being tagged yet by the National Hurricane Center. And I think you'll see why here in just a second. But uh, definitely some healthy looking waves. None of them getting named yet. I'll be honest. I thought this one uh, over here was Fernand and all the satellite data I saw, you know, made me think that this one definitely could have been. Uh, the NHC didn't end up pulling the trigger and now it's running into an environment that's slightly less favorable. So uh, we'll see maybe in the postseason analysis, they go back and give this one a name and add it to the season count. Maybe they won't. We'll see either way, um, you know, uh, to each their own. How about that? We'll leave it there. Uh, now, the other thing, obviously, is Hurricane Aaron and uh, still just a, a monster of a storm out here just off coast. Now, starting to get that more extra tropical look, it's starting to look a little bit more like a mid-latitude cyclone. Uh, it's starting to run out of warmer ocean temperatures, and uh, this is going to kind of start to happen. This is the beginning of the end of air, and you can see how a lot of these uh, upper-level you know, cloud deck is starting to get a little uh, less cold, if you will, uh, meaning uh, it's kind of just flat and not quite as convective. Now, convective banding in it, you can see we've got this belt of lightning here and uh, you know, plenty of thunderstorm action still ongoing, but this one going to become extra tropical or post-tropical probably not too long from now, but not before continuing to bring a rip current risk and, uh, you know, even a little bit of gusty winds here along the East Coast. Today, it's going to be the Northeast, and then by tomorrow, it's going to be up in Maritime Canada. So with that said, let's go ahead and give you the latest on the track of Aaron, those wind gusts, and uh, exactly how strong they could get over the next couple of days.
Well, let's time it out for you. And again, I think really not going to see any more rain from Aaron, at least on shore for just about anybody. You can see the storm passing close to the northeast today and even close there to Nova Scotia, but uh, no dice and far enough offshore that it's not really a problem. Now, some light rain could eventually clip Newfoundland uh, by the time we get towards this weekend. But really, folks, I mean, this one, uh, we're done with Aaron again, outside of the indirect impacts. She's on out to sea and no longer going to be a problem. Like I mentioned, though, we are going to see some gusty winds today. Now, these are max wind gusts throughout the day, so this is not like something that's going to maintain itself. This is the worst it'll get, and you can see the worst being, you know, wind gusts in that 30, 35 mile an hour range from uh, the Chesapeake up through the Delmarva and even up into coastal New Jersey, Long Island, and then even up into the Cape by this evening. Overnight tonight could get a little bit more gusty out towards Nantucket, maybe hitting tropical storm force at times, but not sustained there. Remember, these are wind gusts, so this is as bad as as it gets at any uh, very small time interval. And then by the time we get on into your Friday afternoon, I mean, you know, it's not really breezy anymore. In fact, uh, Aaron long gone from there. Now up into Maritime Canada, also going to see some gusty winds from this one. Here comes the storm pulling on up the coast. And uh, yeah, for Nova Scotia, the worst of it uh, probably going to also be tomorrow afternoon and evening uh, on the very far south and eastern beaches could gust up near 60 to 70 kilometers per hour. But even that's probably a stretch. And remember, that would be the worst of it at any point in time before the storm starts moving up towards Newfoundland and, uh, you know, clipping the southern edges of the island here with about the same intensity as Nova Scotia got before all gone and all said and done by the time we look a little bit further ahead in a time towards the start of this coming week. Now, that's Aaron. Aaron is gone. But with those other areas in the tropics, you know, where are those going and how strong could they get? Well, let's go ahead and dive into some model data and try to answer that question. I think probably the one uh, concern through the rest of hurricane season is going to be this map right here. We've got very warm sea surface temperatures, uh, especially the Gulf. And remember, we haven't really had a big storm in the Gulf so far this year, so it's continuing to warm up. Uh, nothing has really slowed that process down. Obviously, we'll start to cool down a little bit just from the changing of seasons here over the next month or two. But I mean, these are explosive levels of sea surface temperatures, the Caribbean as well. And the ocean heat content, meaning how deep does that warm water go, is a lot deeper here, especially the Caribbean uh, than any other part of um, you know the Atlantic in general. So uh, that's going to be something to watch. These are the actual numbers, and if we look at the anonymous, uh, the anon, excuse me, anomaly. Oh my goodness, this is the second day in the row I could not say anomaly for some reason. I guess this here uh, cup of coffee isn't quite doing the trick all the way yet, but that's okay. Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, either way, though, you can see that correlates to above average temperatures here at the surface of the sea, aka sea surface temperatures uh, in this part of the world. So that, that definitely will be something we need to watch. Uh, also, check this out. This is right behind Aaron, uh, seeing some cooler temperatures uh, as it created some upwelling and kind of mixed in some of that cooler water from below. So uh, that area is going to be worked over for at least a little bit and the main development region continues to remain kind of just average to even below average uh, here in the temperature department so uh, that's going to be something that we absolutely need to watch are these sea surface temperatures though over the next little bit now, this next storm, I, I think, honestly, this one might be the last two raw for a little while in the Atlantic, um, and uh, we're about to get in a MJO phase that is a lot less favorable here, really through, we'll call it next week, through at least the first week of September or so, and basically what's going to happen is uh, we're going to get a pocket of sinking air to work over the Atlantic. When we had this little active stretch, it was a pocket of rising motion, now it's going to flip the script, and we're going to see compression, and that's going to limit the areas of low pressure that try to develop, but before we get there... Uh, yeah, here's that area that could try to develop. This is the one that has a high end chance of taking for non's name. And uh, we will need to watch this for Bermuda. The GFS gets a hurricane awfully close to Bermuda by the start of next week. Uh, and then after that gets it uh, pretty close up towards Newfoundland as well, obviously weakening it by uh, weakening it by that point. Excuse me. Uh, but um uh, something we'll need to watch. So Bermuda, keep an eye on this one. Uh, Newfoundland, I would even say keep an eye on it. The United States, though, I mean, this is really just not going to do much of anything for us, which is obviously good news. Now, what about the other area? Well, here's the thing. This is right now. This is this afternoon. These are those upper level winds. Here's that current region already getting blasted by a little bit of wind shear. Uh, that other area that we're monitoring in a pocket of slightly more favorable wind shear. You can see how uh, we've got that pocket of lighter winds. Well, let's time out the rest of this through the next couple of days and notice what happens. That other area, the one again with the high percent chance, uh, gets under a favorable area of upper level winds. That difluence aloft that spreads things out and creates lower pressure at the surface. 
Atlantis and thus creates, um, you know, a stronger storm. The other one, I mean, the main development region just starts getting blasted with wind shear here by the time that we get into this weekend. So uh, this first wave is kind of uh, like in, you're in an action movie and you're running for the exit as the building is blowing up behind you. That's kind of what's happening in the Atlantic. That one is getting out just in time where everything else stuck in the Atlantic uh, in the main development region, at least, is just about to get shredded by wind shear likely uh, here into this weekend and into the start of next week. And that's why it's only at a low percent chance of developing uh, the other one. And then obviously this uh, other storm moving up towards Bermuda, like we mentioned, and could potentially run into a more favorable environment. Now, that's the global models. Well, what about the ensembles? Do the ensembles agree that this is what's going to happen? And they do they also show kind of a lack of anything after this? Well, let's switch on over and take a look. European ensemble members doing a pretty good job at kind of picking apart all the different areas. Obviously, this one right here is Aaron pulling on up and out to sea. Not a problem anymore. Uh, this kind of cluster here, that's the storm I just mentioned that's likely to take Fernand's name. Now, uh, remember, the GFS had that storm just to the east of Bermuda, or the west, I should say. Uh, the European ensembles are a lot further, generally speaking, uh, to uh, the the west here, or the east. Oh my goodness, I can't even get directions right today. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, there's Bermuda. So uh, close enough that we still need to watch it on the ensembles here. And then the other area, some European ensemble members do develop that and keep it going all the way into the Caribbean, but that's probably about five or six out of uh, I think it's about 50 in the suite here of ensembles. So, uh, you know, not overly impressive percentage wise. And the uh, GFS ensemble members uh, just absolutely hate that other area in the Caribbean. They do nothing with it. They kill it off due to all that wind shear I just mentioned. But a lot more excited about this other area likely to take Fernand's name. And yeah, a lot of ensemble members bring it right over Bermuda or at least within 100 miles or two. And then some of those members even go up and clip um, Newfoundland. So we'll watch it. We'll keep you up to date there on the ensemble. But you notice, folks, really not a whole lot near the United States. Nothing really in the Gulf or Caribbean here. And uh, it's not just these ensemble members. If we take a look at the new uh, Google AI model and uh, kind of show you what it shows... Uh, remember, all these little dots you see are storms. This here is the Fernand cluster, or what would likely be it, uh, by the time we get on into... Uh, this would be Sunday of this weekend. So, again, not far from now. Could have a named storm by the weekend. Uh, behind it, though... I mean, nothing. Uh, the Atlantic dies. <laughs> There's nothing out there on the ensembles here of any sort of significance. I mean, kind of crazy low numbers here uh, to see this time of year. Like I said, due to that upper level winds kind of creating sinking motion uh, here to end out August and probably even start September. Now, what does that mean, though? That means probably the pattern is going to change up again by the middle and end of September. So maybe we get a more active end of September uh, compared to the end of August. Uh, which by that point, the ocean's basically as hot as it can get. So we'll um, we'll need to monitor that for sure. We could have a heavy end of season or a backloaded hurricane season this year. Very much could be possible. All right, so I've got for you on the tropics. Let's go ahead and take a look at that cold front on the way. And uh, trust me, you're going to want to stay tuned for this one because it's going to feel nice after this works on through. Right now, pretty quiet, all things considered. We've got some showers and storms up into North Dakota and towards Minnesota. We had some rain yesterday in the Northeast. Now, a lot of dryers, high pressure, and subsidence on the outside of Hurricane Aaron start to work on in. Uh, but, uh, yeah, pretty quiet weather day, all things considered. Obviously, the story, though, is how that's going to change. And, you know, I love to use the term blueberry. And, boy, oh, boy, do we have one on the way. You can see one blueberry off the coast right now. That's Aaron pulling up on out of here. But a big-time trough. And that pocket of blue, remember, that's just a pocket of cold air in the atmosphere, at least relative speaking to what it should be this time of year. These are anomalies. Oh, my goodness. These are anomalies. Ah, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, big old blue anomaly or blueberry or, you know, a pocket of cooler air up here into the Midwest and the Great Lakes uh, on the way for this weekend. And that's going to last for a while. I mean, notice it works on into the uh, Northeast, hangs around. It gets a reinforcing shot here by the middle of next week. And uh, even more of these troughs also is kind of the more meteorological term to probably use. Um, we keep working on into the eastern U.S. and bring this nicer air. Now, when I say nicer air, what do I mean? Well, one of the big things are the dew points are going to drop. And if you don't know what that means or why that's significant, the dew point is how much moisture is in the air, basically. The higher the number, the more muggy it feels. The lower the number, uh, the you know more crisp and cool it feels out there. These purplish colors, that's pretty oppressive. Once you get into those more dry colors, like you see starting to work in right here. That's a lot nicer. And check it out by next Tuesday afternoon. I mean, we've got dew points down into the 50s. That is about as comfortable as it gets in August, folks, from the Carolinas 
well up into the Northeast, all the way across the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the Northern Plains, obviously the Rockies, where uh, you would expect that. In fact, actually, it's more humid down into portions of, uh, you know, Southern Arizona than it is uh, even into parts of the East. So uh, we're going to kind of flip the script here a little bit and switch things up. Now, some humidity is going to remain, uh, but if we get multiple shots of this drier air, as you can see the model kind of projecting, uh, you know, that could be a good sign to keeping this uh, nicer air locked into place. Uh, what about temperature anomaly anomalies? Uh, I'm going to quit here in a second. <laughs> I promise I'm just going to give up. Um, but uh, what about temperature anomalies? Uh, well, you know, it's going to get nice. I mean, here's the blue. It starts to work on in. I mean, this is next Tuesday into Wednesday. In fact, these are morning temperatures. So, you know, this is the departure from average, 10 degrees below average. I mean, average lows are starting to get lower now. So we can have some pretty crisp mornings by the time we get into next week. I'm thinking lows maybe down even into the 60s, potentially lower 60s for the Carolinas, 50s for the North, maybe even some 40s mixing in. Uh, probably, you know, a little too soon to get any, for to, any sort of frost or freeze advisories out of this um, outside of, you know, Alaska or maybe the extremely high terrain in the Northeast. But uh, this is still a really nice pocket of air. And you can see it kind of hangs on for some time is what the models are suggesting. Are we going to get any rain out of this? Well, some of us will. You can see by this weekend, here comes the front associated with it. Uh, rain chances increasing up and down the eastern seaboard for your uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then we need to watch next week as this kind of stalls out. Little pieces of energy look to kind of ride through this region. Uh, so I, I think we'll need to watch the southern tier of the country, specifically Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and down through the Gulf states. Could see higher in rain chances with a pattern like this. Uh, by the time we get on into the middle of next week, and again, I think that could last. The uh, Climate Prediction Center is seeing this. What I just showed you is out to about 10 days. This is 8 to 14 days out. And yeah, they're saying it's still going to remain cool, even in that time frame. Uh, you know, higher in probabilities of below average temperatures, especially here in the Mid-Atlantic, it looks like, but really just much of the east in general outside of the Gulf region, uh, especially, you know, southern Florida, southern Texas, southern Louisiana. Precipitation-wise, yeah, you can see kind of exactly what I was talking about, that belt of higher in rain chances right here into the southern tier uh, will be something we need to watch, but likely drier up into the north uh, and places that we could use some drier up here into the Dakotas, Minnesota, the Midwest has had a pretty wet summer. We could use some nicer, drier uh, weather for a little while for sure. So uh, that's the latest here on uh, everything, I guess. Um, and the latest, I don't know how to say the word anomaly, apparently. So, you know, you learn something new every day. I knew how to say it a week ago. All of a sudden, I don't. I guess uh, my brain's going backwards in time. I'm de-evolving or something like that. But uh, either way, that's all I've got for y'all on this Thursday. Have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow.